So at Drug Science, which I should mention also is a charity founded by Professor David Nutt in 2010, um, upon his sacking from the ACMD, the Advisory Committee on the Misuse of Drugs here in the UK, he was sacked for you know, speaking the truth about drugs and for highlighting, for example, that alcohol really is the most harmful drug in contrast to, say, cannabis or MDMA, psilocybin, ketamine, and so on. And government didn't really want to hear that. So since then, drug science has always been working or, uh, on kind of telling the truth about drugs which is also what we're doing in relation to medical cannabis. Within drug science, we have a medical cannabis working group, and this group was launched specifically to address these issues that are still, unfortunately, after four and a half years of uh, legalized medical access, supposedly here in the UK, which are still prevalent. That is the lack of NHS prescriptions, um, of medical cannabis product. And this concerns especially the full spectrum pro um, products rather than isolates. Um, full spectrum products are in many ways preferred by patients for some conditions, and they're not really available in the um, UK on the NHS. I think we've got literally five prescriptions on this. And um, the reason for that is supposedly the lack of evidence, the lack of RCT evidence, the lack of randomized controlled trial evidence, which of course is still considered the gold standard in medicine. And you know, it obviously certainly has a point, um, has has its area. However, we argue and we really believe that at least in relation to medical cannabis, as well as in relation to medical psychedelics, another kind of forthcoming controversial of new or old medicine, so to say, that real world evidence should really have its place. Real world evidence, I mean, in a kind of systematic and rigorous and standardized fashion um, of data collection, such as T21, which I spoke about just now, um, and uh, how important this is. So in order to move the evidence space further, um, we've seen, for example, in relation to medical cannabis, it's a really broad range of conditions that patients are using medical cannabis for. However, NICE um, here only recommends the prescription of medical cannabis for four main conditions, which is very narrow. You know, these include obviously spasticity in relation to multiple sclerosis, two forms of um, treatment resistant epilepsies, um, as well as nausea and vomiting as a result of chemotherapy and so on, but it doesn't include pain, which is the majority of our patients, as we've seen, and the majority of patients in other um, real-world evidence databases. So that's a, quite a big issue. I should say that um, medical cannabis is prescribed for pain in Germany, for example, and in the US and Canada. So it's really, I guess, the UK, which is a bit of the odd one out. And um, whilst I can't deny that randomized controlled trials are, you know, offer a bit of a mixed bag in terms of the support um, for um, medical cannabis for pain, in relation to real world evidence, there is really very strong and very consistent support, you know, that patients are... Um, are helped um, to treat their pain um, by this medical cannabis. So that's really one of the reasons we set up the medical cannabis working group from Drug Science, as well as consistently then the um, project T21 in order to move the real world evidence forward. The overall aim is um, that really the data will eventually be sufficient to persuade the um, NICE and MHRA, for example, to actually um, be able to allow patients to have medical cannabis prescribed um, on the on the NHS. The other issue that is still um, um, you know happening, there's still a bit of cause of concern here, and makes it quite a barrier to be prescribed. Um, GPs can't prescribe medical cannabis; it is only specialists on the specialist register, which obviously limits. Um, potential prescription, especially because a lot of the issues we've discussed, a lot of the conditions are actually conditions that GPs um, would treat initially or that patients would go to a GP for rather than being referred to a specialist. I think the issue that uh, we found um, or that um, doctors really told us as well is that when they learn about cannabis in medical school, they learn about the issues, the concern, the risks, the um, terms of psychosis, schizophrenia, um, dependence, rather than the potential benefit in relation to the medical uses of cannabis, which is obviously quite different in many ways to some of the recreational uses as well. 
So yeah, there are um, lots more work to do, but obviously that has been um, quite a barrier that um, you know, cannabis is quite a stigmatized medicine. Cannabis is seen to be quite a drug. I think it is improving and has been improving um, through the work really for um, just, you know, take, I don't know if you're familiar with, but, you know, the the mums which uh, such as Hannah Deacon um, who, or um, the pa- parents, I should say, Matt Hughes, um, who have met Khan, for example, um, who have um, epileptic uh, you know, children with pediatric epilepsy who've been helped by medical cannabis and who've really been out and about in the media, on TV, and so telling their stories stories, presenting themselves and um, really putting themselves and their families forward to actually show actually this is work and actually we're normal people. We're just asking here for a medication. I think that has had a huge impact and I think continue because, you know, these are parents, you know, everybody can relate to them and these are small children who can be helped with this. I mean, there's absolutely there's nothing to do with anything stigmatized or anything dangerous, um, dangerous drug. They just want a medicine for their children. And I think quite in a part to education that we're providing, kind of, I guess, more from the scientific aspects. It's certainly these kind of um, stories that they have been brave enough to tell and to put out there that have really changed um, the perspective on cannabis and as well as um, you know people's minds. I mean, who can argue with that? And really, it is really their background work which contribute to the rescheduling of medical cannabis in 2018. You know, they put themselves and their children in front of the media and saying, actually, that's working. We need this. You know, so I think um, we should, with all the scientific evidence I spoke about, I think we um, should never um, neglect actually looking at and listening to the personal stories of patients in general 